<coughs> well, good evening everyone and welcome again to our Bible study here for Armagh Baptist Church. Uh, I'm very glad that you can join me and I'm glad that I can join you in your homes. Again, I think we say every week it's uh, strange days, different times. Uh, we can't meet together as normal in our church building. But we do really enjoy it as well because we get the opportunity maybe to uh, bring this Bible study and our other church services and our other uh, youth uh, work videos as well uh, to maybe a wider audience uh, than we're used to. Uh, so there's a, uh, every cloud is a silver lining as they say and uh, we are uh, really encouraged uh, with the amount of people uh, that have been watching and viewing the different videos. Not for, for us but that they would uh, understand more of God's word uh, and know Jesus Christ also. My name is Paul McAdam. Uh, and I am the assistant pastor in Armagh Baptist Church and again uh, it is wonderful to be able to bring this Bible study to you tonight. I have just uh, two things to highlight uh, for the incoming week, uh, both uh, these things on Facebook, uh, our morning service, Sunday morning service, worship service at 11am and Ian will be bringing that service to us along with his family uh, as normal as it has been since the lockdown began uh, and we thank Ian for that and the family really appreciate it and I know many of you uh, are so appreciative of what they are doing and we praise God for them and the gifts and the abilities that God has given them uh, to be able to do that and also then next Wednesday night uh, we're back here again uh, in my home here and we'll continue on with our Bible study uh, through the book of Colossians or Paul's letter to the Colossians uh, so really encouraged to be here tonight uh, the weather's amazing um, it wouldn't be nice to do this outside uh, but I realised that by the time I'd be done maybe it'd be darker and it wouldn't work that well and then how would you get a PowerPoint to work outside so uh, I think we'll just stick to inside uh, for now anyway um, but it is wonderful uh, to gather tonight uh, and to spend this time together we are going to look at Paul's letter Colossians we're going to read the next passage that we're looking at uh, but before we do that I want to ask the Lord to help us uh, the Lord to help me uh, that I would speak clearly and that you would understand what it is that the word of God is saying to us tonight uh, and that the Lord would bless our time together. So let's let's pray together. Our Father, we bow before you tonight and we want to acknowledge from the start of our time together uh, that you are God, uh, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. You are the triune God. Uh, you are the only God, uh, the one true living God. And Father, we want to acknowledge that tonight. And we come to you, uh, our Father, uh, through the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and empowered by your Holy Spirit, Father. Uh, and we want to thank you for every blessing that you have given us. We are so often, Father, uh, very good at coming with a list of requests, especially in times like these where it um, seems to be strange days, where people, Lord, are going through so much uh, change and so many uh, trials uh, and difficulties father when we can come with a list uh, but we want to thank you uh, for every blessing that you give us we want to thank you for the air we breathe every day we want to thank you uh, for the food that we have to eat we want to thank you Lord for the clothes we have to wear the homes we have to live in Lord the jobs that many of us have uh, every blessing father that you give us I thank you Lord for the sun uh, that's shining Lord right now and that faithfully rises every morning Father, we thank you for your provision in every single way. You are an amazing God and you are worthy of every moment and every second. You're worthy of every breath of our lungs to be bringing you praise. Every action in our lives, every thought of our minds, everything to be bringing you praise. For you alone are God and you alone are worthy. So Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you that we're able to meet here tonight. Thank you that we're able to meet online. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for this uh, provision. But, Lord, we don't meet for the sake of it. We meet around your word. And we want to thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We thank you that your word is living and powerful. We thank you that your word transforms lives. And we thank you, Lord, that you are in the business of transforming lives, of saving souls, of drawing people to Jesus Christ. And we do pray, Father, that you would bless our time together tonight as we examine your word, examine these few verses together that you inspired the Apostle Paul to write. We ask, Father, that you would illuminate our minds and hearts, that you would encourage us, you'd speak to us, and may we know the blessing of your word 
uh, through your Holy Spirit, Lord, within us. Uh, and may you speak clearly tonight, Father. Help me to speak clearly. Help me to uh, be understood. Help me not to complicate uh, this passage, Father. And have those who watch and listen uh, to really enjoy uh, and take in what you would want to say to them tonight. So, Father, thank you for this time. And we ask your blessing upon it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So, if you have a Bible with you, uh, please um, turn to Colossians, Paul's letter to the Colossians, and we're going to read another few verses from chapter 1. We're going to read from chapter 1, uh, verse 15 uh, to 20. It's on the screen uh, if you want to follow along there. We're reading from the ESV. So, it's Colossians chapter 1, and verse 15 down to the end of verse 20. And God's word says, He is, and that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is, above, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together and he is the head of the body the church he is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in everything he might be preeminent for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things whether on earth or in heaven making peace by the blood of his cross and there we'll end our reading at verse 20, we might dip into the next few verses just for a few moments later on uh, in our study, but this is the main focus of our time together tonight. You've probably heard of the story, or the children's story, The Three Little Pigs. I'm sure it's a favourite of some uh, from our man tonight. The first pig, as you well know, and maybe you don't know, maybe this is news to you, but the first pig uh, in this children's story built a house. Three pigs wanted to build a house each. Are obviously into development in a big way, uh, loads of money. But the first pig uh, built his house out of straw and went into his house to live. The second pig uh, built his house out of sticks and there he went into his house to live. The third pig built his house out of bricks and like his other two companions he did the same. He entered his house to live. And one day a wolf came and each pig ran into his house. The wolf came to the first house, but because it was a house of straw, he was able to blow it down. And the pig, pig it ran off into the second house. The wolf came looking for the pig to the second house. And because it was a house of sticks, he blew it down also. It didn't stand. And these two wee pigs run off to the next house. And the wolf came to the third house looking for these pigs, these three pigs, to enjoy and he huffed as the story goes and he puffed and he tried to blow this third house down but the house that was built with bricks stood strong and the wolf was defeated at the end of this story and the pigs were safe wonderful wee children's story we've spent a few weeks now uh, looking at this letter uh, that Paul wrote inspired by God to this young church in the city of Colossae in, in southern where we would know today in southern Turkey. And as I said last week, Paul writes this letter for a reason. There seems to be someone, uh, as we see from a number of verses in chapter 2, there seems to be someone or a group uh, teaching things uh, not to do with Jesus Christ. As the, as the verse says, not according to Christ. But Paul writes to assure them and to instruct them that Jesus Christ is all they need. Whatever these other ones is teaching, about life and eternity but Jesus Christ is all they need for life and for eternity and in this passage tonight he highlights exactly why this is the case why Jesus is all they need I start uh, with this story uh, of the three little pigs to help us see that anything other than Jesus Christ building our lives on anything other than Jesus Christ and putting our trust in anything other than Jesus Christ is just like these first two houses. Everything else will fall. Whenever the wind blows and life takes its toll, everything else with, will fall. 
But trusting only in Christ is like that house of bricks. Trusting only in Christ is the right place to be. It is the only place to be. And Paul now tells us why in this passage. In verse 13 that we looked at last week, he writes that God has delivered us, including himself and this church, God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, and that beloved Son is Jesus. And now, in verse 15, in a sense, in a way, it's as if Paul pulls off the main road and, and turns off the car and grabs our attention and he opens our eyes and speaks directly to us and to these people to why Jesus Christ is that safe and secure place to why we trust in Jesus Christ remember these other teachers are trying to teach something that's not about Jesus it's about traditions human traditions and all other stuff but here Paul seems to pull them aside and he just opens up why it is Jesus is worth trusting why it is he is the only one that we can trust why it is he's the only one that we can be safe and secure in for life here and now and for eternity in the future. The first truth that he tells them about is that Jesus is supreme over all creation. Jesus is supreme over all creation. Let me read verses 15 to 17 again. He, that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things were created through him and for him and he is before all things and in him all things hold together paul says the start of verse 15 he is the image of the invisible god and what paul is saying here is that when we look at christ we see who god is and we see what god is like Jesus is God revealed to us. The invisible God made visible. The four Gospels are given to us to capture the life and the heart and the work of Jesus Christ. And in those Gospels, when you start to examine what it reveals to us about Jesus Christ, we see the power of Jesus. We see the knowledge of Jesus. We see the wisdom of Jesus. We see the grace of Jesus. We see the patience of Jesus. We see his mercy. We see his love. We see his self-sacrificial love, his self-sacrificial mindset and heart and life. We see his forgiveness. We see justice at the cross. We see judgment at the cross also of Jesus Christ. We see all these things in the life of Jesus Christ and so much more than what I have listed. So when we look at Jesus, we see God revealed. We see who God is and we see what God is like. Jesus reveals to us. He is the image of God. Now when I think of an image and possibly when you think of an image, we may think of a photograph or a painting, a picture of some sort. In other words, the image Uh, isn't the real thing if I take a picture tonight or obviously you're watching me tonight this is a video you're not don't have the real thing in your home maybe that's good maybe you're happy enough with that but you don't have the real me in your home you have a picture you have a video of me it's a copy it's inferior to the real thing but Paul says here that Jesus is the image of the invisible God he is not saying that Jesus is a picture or a copy and that he's just he's not really God he's inferior to God because Paul adds here that Jesus is in the next few words the firstborn of all creation or better the NIV says the firstborn over all creation it's not only does Jesus reveal who God is to us and we see God in Jesus but Paul tells us that Jesus is the firstborn of all over all creation And when we think of the term firstborn, uh, we may assume that Paul is highlighting that Jesus was born uh, as a baby in Bethlehem, that that's what he's speaking about here. 
But that's not the biblical idea, the biblical understanding of the term firstborn. Firstborn in the Old Testament doesn't express the fact that you were born, but expresses the fact of status, of importance, that you are the first. So here Paul is saying, not that Jesus is born, but that Jesus is supreme, that he is of utmost importance over all creation, over everything that has been created. Jesus is not just a baby boy born in Bethlehem at some particular stage in history, but he's far, far more. Jesus is supreme over all creation. He and Paul goes on here to explain why in verse 16. He says, For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. I want you to notice three things. First of all it says, For by him all things were created. The NIV puts it actually in him all things were created, which most will believe that that's actually a better translation. In him, for in him all things were created. In other words, all creation originated in him. The plan of creation, the desire for creation, the possibility of creation, everything to do with creation, and me and you as part of that creation, began in Jesus Christ. Christ for in him all things were created and then Paul says at the end of that verse he says all things were created not in him but through him all things were created through him and as John put it in chapter 1 he says all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made all of creation was made through Jesus Christ Everything that we know from time began, when we flick open the first chapter of Genesis and we read of God's account of creation, all things were created through Jesus Christ. Jesus did not begin at his birth in Bethlehem. Jesus was there before the beginning because everything was made for in him all things were created and now all things were created through him. He was the agent of creation and without him, Nothing, nothing would have been made without Jesus Christ. So that's first two things. In him is all things created. Through him is all things created. And the last one that Paul mentions, all things were created for him. You notice at the end of verse 16. Let me check to make sure it is verse 16. Yeah, all things were created through him and for him. Everything was made for his purpose and for his glory. All things were made in him, through him and for him. And Paul is making sure here that we know and that these Christians know in Colossae that he's writing to the supremacy of Jesus Christ over creation. He is more than just a carpenter from Nazareth who, who made things whatever they were in those days. He is the invisible God made visible in flesh who made everything. He is supreme over all creation. And that should and, and that we could be have no safer place than trusting in him. There is no safer place than Christ. And this should bring great comfort. I believe brings great comfort to me. Great comfort to us when we think of our world and everything that's going on at the moment. Knowing the character of Jesus Christ and what we see in those four Gospels, God revealed and knowing that the character and life and heart of Jesus Christ and work of Jesus Christ is the one who is over all creation. The power of Christ as we read, the love, the grace and the mercy, knowing that he is supreme over all this world that that's the God we serve that's the God we have that's over everything when we see Jesus Christ that's the one we have why would we worry or fret 
about our world, about what's going on, about our lives, when we know that's the God whom we serve. Our God is an awesome God, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, a loving God, a just God. And how wonderful it is to know that he is supreme over all creation, everything. The second truth uh, that Paul points out to these people, this church, is that Jesus is supreme over the church. So he's not only supreme over all creation, which is wonderful, but he is supreme over the church. Verse Verse 18 to 20 says, And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Paul uses the same line of thinking uh, for the church as he did for creation. Let me show you. So we know that being part of his church is the best place to be. That's why he tells us this. He says that Jesus is the head of the body of the church. In other words, that Jesus rules the church. Jesus leads the church. Jesus is the full and final authority over the church, his church. Jesus is the head of the body. He says also that Jesus is the beginning. He is the church, because that's what he's speaking about here. He's the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning. He is the beginning of the church. He is the one who established the church. The plan for the church began with him and no one else. And Jesus is the firstborn, Paul says, from the dead. He is the one who has paid for the church. He is the one who has made the church possible, giving his life for the church single-handedly defeating sin, rising from the dead, the firstborn from the dead, supreme over death, bringing new life to those who trust in him, who are part of the church. There is no church, what Paul is saying here, these people, there is no church without Jesus Christ. He's supreme over the church, not only over creation, but over the church. We think of these individuals, maybe they were teaching things that were um, contrary to Christ, not according to Jesus Christ. But Paul's reinforcing the mind here, saying there is no church without Jesus Christ. He's the one that has established the church. The church begins with him. He's the firstborn from the dead. He's the one that has bought the church with his own blood. And Paul uses the three terms that he used for creation to explain what he means here in him through him and for him not only for creation but also the church in verse 19 he says for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell Jesus the one who created all things stepped down and became humbled himself became a man who was fully God and fully man And only in Jesus Christ could the church ever exist. If Jesus was only man, well then Jesus would be the exact same as me and you. Jesus would be fallen in sin if he was only man. On the other hand, if Jesus was only God, well then he could not have died as a substitute for man because he was only God. But this verse says, in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. In Jesus Christ, this man, the fullness of God dwelt. He was the God man. In him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. In him. And then it goes on, Paul says, through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And just like creation, and this is wonderful, just like creation, it was made through him. Also the new creation, the church, is made through him and only through him. And that's what Paul 
is getting these people to understand the importance and the supremacy of Jesus Christ in all of creation but in the church also. Because he is the one who reconciled heaven and earth. That's what it says. Through him to reconcile to himself all things whether on earth or in heaven making peace by the blood of his cross. He's the one that has reconciled heaven and earth. Both man and God. Making peace by the blood of his cross, by his death on the cross of Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary, excuse me. It is only through him, through Jesus, that the church exists. And lastly, so we've had in him, in Christ, fully God, fully man, through him, through his work on the cross of Calvary, and his blood that was shed for our sin. And lastly then, for him. The term is not so clear here, but look at verse 21 and 22. We didn't read it at the start. Verse 21 and 22 says this. And you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, being doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. Jesus' desire is that his blood-bought people, his blood-bought church, would stand righteous before him. Notice what it says. In order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. That we would stand holy and blameless above reproach before him. We are saved for him. We are saved for his glory we are saved for his name we are saved for his witness we are saved not for anyone else we are saved for him that we would stand one day holy and blameless and above reproach before him we're saved in him through him and for him and Jesus is supreme over the church so whatever these false teachers were saying that was contrary to Christ Paul makes sure that these Colossians and that we also understand that Jesus is supreme he's supreme over creation it was made in him it was made through him and it was made for him and he is supreme over the church we are made in him through him and for him and that's why verse 13 says that we have been tra- he has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son and that's why it's the right place to be and it is the only place to be because Jesus is over all creation and Jesus is over all the church and neither would exist without Jesus Christ If we are trusting in him, we are in a safe place. We are in the right place. Trusting in any other, Paul makes very clear, the Bible makes it very clear, is just like those two pigs eh, at the start. They built their houses with straw and sticks. And when the time came, it didn't stand. It didn't last. And I urge you tonight, and I encourage you tonight if you have, is trust in Jesus Christ. We have nothing to fear in Christ. He's supreme over all. And there is no other and no better place to be. So I close with Acts 4 and verse 12 tonight. And it says, There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And what the word of God clearly tells us is exactly this we must be saved and there is no other except Jesus Christ that can save us now and for eternity there's life found in Christ here and now and for eternity also Jesus is supreme no matter what anybody says no matter what anybody teaches he is supreme over everything and may God bless you and may the Lord keep you also i have a few prayer points there's uh, prayer meetings obviously on zoom 
uh, for our church members after uh, I finish here in a few moments. Uh, Ian's looking after one, I'm looking after the other as usual on a Wednesday night and it is a wonderful blessing to come together and pray uh, that the Lord would would bless many people. But here's a few prayer points uh, if you're unable to join us tonight. Uh, I'd like you to thank God really and maybe you know of others, you're not associated to our church uh, but thank God for those uh, who have recovered from sicknesses, uh, finished times of treatments uh, and continue to pray for some who continue to recover. Uh, we praise God for what he has done in many lives, especially in our church uh, and how he has truly blessed over this last number of months. Uh, please pray for those who have lost loved ones in our church family over this last number of weeks. It's very difficult, uh, unable to uh, comfort. Um, we're unable to give comfort as God's people in the ways that we would like. And um, Please pray for those uh, as families can't meet together uh, and encourage each other. Uh, please pray for our health care workers. Uh, both in our church and across our world uh, and they do a phenomenal job uh, giving their lives uh, to protect and to be a blessing and a help to others uh, and we thank God for those uh, and we praise God for uh, the gifting those people in that way. Uh, please pray for our online videos, videos like this, our services on Sunday morning, the youth work that's going out as well, uh, the videos on the Katie Facebook page, please pray that the Lord would use these uh, for his glory. And the people will come to know what we've talked about tonight. Jesus is supreme over all. I ask you to pray for the work in Katy. Uh, as we, as many of you know that we hope to uh, plant a church in Katy. Uh, we hope to uh, begin Sunday morning services in September if the restrictions are lifted, God willing. Um, so please pray for the work here in Katy. And really pray for a great awakening uh, across our land, uh, across our world. That people may see uh, that Jesus Christ, who he is and what he has done for them but as i end i'd like to thank you for watching tonight thank you for taking the time on this lovely evening uh, and i pray that the lord would bless you but let me close in prayer uh, before we uh, depart from each other father i want to thank you tonight uh, for the lord jesus christ uh, we want to thank you that all things were created uh, in him through him and for him we thank you, Lord, that he is supreme over all creation. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for the fact that he is supreme over the church, that the church would not exist without him, that the church is created in him and through him and for him. And therefore, Lord, if he's supreme over creation and supreme over the church, he is supreme over all things. And Father, we bow before you tonight, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and we do thank you for your word. We thank you for the revelation of your word uh, to our hearts. Thank you that we can enjoy this uh, time together. And I just ask your blessing on all those who listen. I pray you'll bless them, Lord, maybe as they uh, have a time of prayer now, uh, either in their homes or on Zoom with us. Uh, we pray, Lord, you'll bless our time together. Uh, and Lord, you'd really encourage us in the Lord and help us not to fear, uh, knowing that Jesus is supreme over all things. The one who has demonstrated his love his grace, his mercy, his power, his patience, uh, his humility, everything uh, that we would desire for ourselves and for others is displayed in Jesus Christ. And therefore, Lord, we do not need to fear. Uh, Christ is supreme. And we worship him and we thank you for every blessing. Thank you for our time again. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And bless us now as we part in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. <laughs>